Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We are finally watching Captain Marvel, and I couldn't be more psyched. Uh, I've been I've seen every MCU movie in theaters since The Winter Soldier. That's actually what got me really, really hooked on the MCU. Um, but I haven't seen Captain Marvel, and I haven't seen Endgame yet because I wanted to share my reaction with you guys. So uh, I've been waiting several months for it to come out digitally, and it finally has. So I'm super psyched. Um, I don't know too much about Captain Marvel. Uh, and her history, I and mean, Carol Danvers' history. I know she has Kree origins, I know she's involved in some Skrull battle, and I know that Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan, really looks up to her. And I think that's about it. Uh, I know some of her powers-ish. Uh, I've seen the first two trailers, so it seems like like cosmic energy blasts something, I don't know. But uh, I really liked her as a character, just like what she symbolizes. Um, for a very long time actually there was a 50 percent off like deal at gamestop and merchandise and i got this captain marvel mug uh don't know if she's sporting this haircut in the movie i don't think so just because i haven't seen her i don't know from the trailers it didn't look like she had it but maybe you know i don't who knows maybe she uh it will be a surprise down the road but yeah um I've seen, I, like I said, I saw the two trailers, so I do know that Agent Coulson is in this movie, and actually Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is my favorite TV show of all time. Uh, Game of Thrones almost caught up to it, but then like it kind of faltered at the end. So, um, yeah, super excited that Agent Coulson is in this movie. I kind of wish that I didn't know that he was in this movie. I wish I had just found out while I was watching it, but uh, so it'll be very, very nice to see him back in the MCU movies, uh, if, if it's just this, even if it's just this one, just because... Uh, we haven't seen him since the Avengers, which was like, what, 2013? I'm not completely sure about that. Don't quote me on that. But, yeah, uh, Captain Marvel. First fem fe first solo female-led uh, MCU movie, so super excited about that. Hope they do that justice. And I've heard really good things about it. Even one of my friends who isn't a that big of a fan of the MCU uh, enjoyed this movie, and most of the negativity I've heard has come from sexist trolls, so uh, just ignore that. And, like, smile more! She should smile more in the trailer! It's like, really? Come on, man. Um, but yeah, super psyched for this film, and uh, again, I am gonna watch Endgame here, too, so no spoilers on that. I'll probably not watch, I'll probably not read the comments uh, on this video for a while until I have a friend look over them, and I'll read them right afterwards. But yeah, uh, without further ado, if you want to watch the full reaction, you can check out Patreon in the link in the description below. And we're doing more movies there too, one a week on Fridays, or like uh, with this movie, there's a big, uh, it's a big release, a big new movie, so it'll be earlier in the week. But yeah, let's get started. Anger only serves the enemy. No one can look upon the supreme intelligence in its true form. Who do you see? Your brother. No. Father. No. It's me you see, isn't it? <laughs> I see what you're trying to do. You have a mission. Serve well and with honor. I don't know if I trust this supreme intelligence. They're locals. I found two dead. No green. They're just starving. Hmm. Oh. Damn. Oh. Oh, no. Ah. You're a DC boy. But you're too emotional. You do know why they call it a cockpit, don't you? Get your butts inside, it's time to eat. Prepare for takeoff. Oh boy, nope. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> She's so happy about it. Ground. This is Earth. Blockbuster video. Where can I find communications equipment? Radio Jack. <laughs> Thank you. 
we find out in Agent's Shield that it's a Hydra Front. Coulson! Agent Coulson. You know anything about a lady blowing a hole through the roof of that blockbuster over there? Trust me, true believer. Trust me. Stanley. <laughs> Uh, I'm still here at the Blockbuster, and, uh, where'd everybody go? Oh. I finished collecting evidence. Crash on purpose? It's an alien. <laughs> Poor Colson got left behind. <laughs> you lighting up, honey, huh? Got a smile for me? Steal it. <laughs> oh, now I'm curious. You may be curious about alien junk. Everybody calls me Fury. Not Nicholas, not Joseph, not Nick. What does your mom call you? Fury. What do you call her? Fury. What about your kids? What? If I have them, they'll call me Fury. <laughs> it's a cat. Oh my goodness, look at you. Just Goose. Get you. Fury. Aww. Aww. Oh. My bad. <laughs> My bad. He trusts Fury. Completely. Loyal to Fury from the start. The cat? We got a store with. <laughs> oh no. Hang on, Goose. Mom, it's Auntie Carol. I knew it. Everyone said you were dead. But we knew they were lying. Green transforming aliens? There's no such thing. You're absolutely right, young lady. There's no such thing. Because if there were, we would want to keep that to ourselves. <laughs> Me? I know this must be hard for you. Oh, with this part right here? No. No, what's hard is losing my best friend. What the hell? No one's gonna hurt the girl. A black box. They told me it was destroyed in the crash. How'd I you get it? She don't understand. Young lady, I have a special skill that kind of allows me to get into places I'm not supposed to be. Call me young lady again, I'm gonna put my foot in a place it's not supposed to be. <laughs> Am I supposed to guess where that is? Your, Your ass. ass. <laughs> okay, I get it. We're all a little on edge here. <gasps> oh. Oh. We have no interest in hurting you. Ooh. And it got her. She absorbed its power. That's why they she's coming with us. I don't even know who I am. You are she Carol does. Danvers. She does. My best friend who supported me as a mother and a pilot when no one else did. You were smart and funny and a huge pain in the ass. <laughs> and you were the most powerful person I knew. You have to go. Monica. You have a chance to find the coolest mission in the history of missions. And you're going to give it up to sit on the couch and watch Fresh Prince with me? <laughs> I just think you should consider Fresh what kind Prince. of example you're setting for your daughter. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> There's her classic look. <laughs> if Fury loses his eye because of Goose, I'm gonna be real mad. In her notes, she called it the Tesseract. Oh, she had the Tesseract? Talos. Oh, she was keeping Skrulls safe here? 
I'm so sorry. I didn't know. This is war. My hands are filthy from it too. You found my family. Cloak the thing back up. Fraternizing oh, with the enemy. God oh, damn it. No. It's a cat, not Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> Thing. You want me to get you an oven mitt? <laughs> oh, what the? Not a cat. Got it. for the weapon. The core. The woman. Turn off the light show and prove, prove to me you can beat me with that. <laughs> uh. I have nothing to prove to you. Great, great. Great line. What? <laughs> Drag. That was a close call, huh, Goosey? Huh? Please <laughs> don't. Bad guy's still in there somewhere. No, 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 no. You okay? Yeah. It's just a scratch. No. No. That's how he lost. God damn it. Wait. Oh yes. Wait a minute, Mr. Postman. Wait, Mr. Postman. What? You think I'm gonna crank call you? <laughs> For emergencies only, okay? Didn't even call <laughs> during Avengers. So is it true? The Kree burned your eye out because you refused to give them the Tesseract? I will neither confirm nor deny the facts of that story. Understood. Wow. Avenger Danvers. Ooh. The Avenger Initiative. And here's the theme. All right, guys, I really love this movie. I uh, really enjoyed what they did with the Kree and the Skrulls. If you watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., we you probably didn't trust the Kree right away simply because um, 
the, some they've never been super helpful, uh, and some of the ones that we've seen have actually uh, been part of extremist groups that experimented on different species to try and create genetically modified warriors. So, and then in the films, I think we've the only Kree we've seen is Ronin um, before this film, uh, and he was an extremist as well um, in Guardians of the Galaxy. And yet we trust the when going into this film. Uh, I trusted the Kree more than the Skrulls. Like, the fact that the Skrulls abduct Carol uh, to start the film and then they seem to be after the Lightspeed engine doesn't help. But um, even when the Skrulls were revealed to be, like, victims, I was just like, really? I don't... Like, I understand they're victims, but, like, do I trust them completely at this point? And it's very well written when you're not sure who's on... who's the who's the person you should be rooting for. And part of it is the scroll's power, like the ability to shapeshift into any likeness they've seen can be so easily abused and exploited. Um, and they've been ruth they were ruthless at points. They almost killed Fury. Um, Talos almost killed Fury. But I like where they went with it instead, um, with instead of making the scrolls the typical bad guys and the Kree the noble warrior heroes. Um, yeah, very, very much like that. And I actually thought that all Kree were blue, but perhaps a lot of these Kree warriors are just part of the Kree Empire and not actually the Kree race. That's probably what it is, because, um, yeah, Jude Law's not blue, Carol's not blue, um, though they, she does bleed blue, so I'm just, like, I'm a little, a little confused. Um, yeah, I thought all Kree were blue, but maybe that's not the case. Anyway, yeah, well, we've learned a lot more about the Kree in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but we never learned about the Supreme Intelligence, which I thought was... A, really cool addition to this film. We never saw who anybody else saw in that uh, they see as the Supreme Intelligence, except for Carol. But uh, that was that's a really interesting, um, that's really interesting world building that you see the person you most uh, admire and the fact that Carol doesn't even remember her. That's, I thought that was really good uh, storytelling. And uh, it was really, really interesting finding out about the Tesseract. Uh, so my knowledge before the film was that was that it was found by Johann Smith in the 40s and fueled Hydra weapons, then fell into the sea when Cap flew the plane into the ocean in the first Captain America. And I think Howard Stark got it back. And I guess Project Pegasus was started to study it, and Marvell was able to take it for uh, the Kree before realizing their mission was wrong and kept it hidden from them. And uh, now it goes back to Goose and then Fury. And that starts the race for unlimited energy that led to the events of the Avengers. So that all makes sense. It's all connected. Um, and we get to find out a little bit, a little bit more history about the Tesseract. Because I assumed it was just in S.H.I.E.L.D. hands from uh, when Howard Stark got it to when um, Fury was researching it. And uh, yeah, I, one part of this film that I really, really appreciate, I can't get away with, I, I'm not going to avoid talking about this i think depending on how sensitive people are to like feminist issues this might have been like there was some like really obvious uh parallels or it could have just flown over a lot of people's heads and i thought it was really really well done actually um there were a lot of like on the nose references to sexism and there were a lot of not as obvious parallels too so i really appreciated that and yeah i liked i really like carol as a character she's so playful and really confident and yeah, I think throughout this film, I saw the Supreme Intelligence kind of representing as uh, society as a whole. And it started with how, like, Jan Rog, um, Jude Law, says that Supreme Intelligence gave him the responsibility of showing Carol how to use her powers. Despite the fact that he doesn't have them in the first place. Like, he doesn't... Nobody else in the Kree society even has those powers. So how is he supposed to show her... Like, it just... Uh, and then he says that if she knew how to use her powers, she'd be able to beat him without them. Like, he's setting up this arbitrary thing to make her play by his rules and stop her from using everything at her disposal. Which, yeah, like, that's how, that's the way, like, sexism and the patriarchy work in this society. Uh, in our society. And then the Kree are just, like, gaslighting Carol whenever possible. Like, oh, those aren't your memories. Like, those are visions the scrolls implanted. Um... Yeah, it's just a lot of ridiculousness that doesn't make sense that she has to... That's like... It's said to her over and over and over again so that it's kind of implanted in her head. Uh, she gets brainwashed. And like, oh, she, you're not as strong as you think. And it's because of the chip. Like, she... They put a chip in her neck and says, like, oh, the, the power isn't yours. Like, we, ga we gave it to you. And we can take it back. But they didn't give it to her. And they couldn't take it back. So, yeah, just gaslighting her throughout the film. It was frustrating. But... 
seeing her overcome that was really good too. Um, it was really satisfying. And yeah, we get flashbacks where even when she was a younger child, she didn't listen to what her father told her to do. They had like a her father had like a really specific idea of what a girl or young girl should be, and she didn't fit that. And she was just doing whatever she wanted. Um, it was great seeing that. And yeah, Yan Rog is just constantly trying to keep her in this state where she'll be useful only to the Kree. He tells her to stop using her heart and her emotions to fight and start using her mind to fight. And we know the old sexist thing like, oh, women are too emotional. Like, that's the sexist um, thought that goes throughout our society. And like, he's trying to keep her emotionless to keep her brainwashed. Which, what does that say about our society? And then she's, he said, I want you to be the best version of yourself. And... In reality, he's saying, like, the verse, the version that best serves my goals and the Kree goals. So, yeah, it was just, like, a lot of oppression and stuff that just frust- it can be really frustrating. And, um, yeah, even later when Carol is captured again, the Supreme Intelligence said that, Carol, like I said before, that Carol has never had the strength to control the powers on her own. And, yeah, it was the chip in her neck. So, yeah, um, I'm glad that she was able to push through. Like, the, one of the my favorite scenes was just her... The Kree, the Supreme Intelligence telling her how weak she is and how she's flawed. And then there's like that montage of her getting back up as a child and just over and over again. She just continues to get back up. And it's not even about her superpowers because every single time she got back up, except for the very last one where she was talking to the Supreme Intelligence, those are before she got her superpowers. And I really appreciate that. Um, Yeah, this is a very feminist movie, like regardless of what... um, I'm sure a lot of... There were a lot of people who were ignoring this and saying, like, it's not a feminist movie. Whatever. I don't, I'm not going to touch on that. Um, but yeah, one of the highlights of this movie was the relationship between Maria Rambo and Carol Danvers. Uh, they were extremely close before all this went down. They did everything together. Interesting tidbit was that um, Maria said that she was... That um, Carol's move was, like, knocking on her door to wake her up first thing in the morning. And she did that very same thing with Jan Rog at the start, start of the film. So a part of her personality was still there, even with the memory loss. I uh, find that really cool, cool detail. Yeah, and then Maria was talking about how hard it was to lose Carol. And uh, the line that I love so much is, like, uh, when Carol's not sure who she is, she's like, I don't even know who I am. And, of course, Maria knows. And um, she was saying that she's her best friend who helped her raise her child when nobody else would. Uh, she's funny. She's a pain in the ass. And she told her how powerful she was even before she could shoot fire out of her hands. I thought she was the most powerful woman, person in the world before she could even shoot fire out of her hands. That was a great line. And uh, Maria's daughter, Monica, is Monica Rambeau. And so same last name as Maria. And I found out that in the comics, um, Monica Rambeau actually has significance with the Captain Marvel character. I uh, won't spoil that, for that, spoil that for people here if... You don't know it already, but you can look it up if you want to know. I don't I don't think it'll show up in future movies just yet. Um, it'll be a while, but she has a uh, few, she has a storyline as Cap, um, with Captain Marvel. Um, but yeah. She has her mother's last name and her father isn't in any of the pictures in their home, but Carol is. So it makes me wonder if Maria had a sperm donor, had her via sperm, sperm donor, or it's a possibility. Um, I'm not going to say like I have it figure it out, but it's just this, just throwing out theories. And uh, it was basically her and Carol raising Monica together. And she also calls, Monica also calls Carol Auntie Carol. And while in like my Chinese culture, you call everyone from the last generation auntie and uncle, in American culture, that has always felt like something reserved for people who are like super close with your parents. And so. Yeah, I feel like it's not out of the question that Carol and Maria are were dating, and if you want to ha- headcanon it, headcanon it that way, all the more power to you. I think that's my headcanon too. Uh, I don't, sh- I don't know if I think of them as like I, I'm not sure. I'm not gonna pin them down on their sexuality, but I'm open to them being lesbians or bi. Um, of course, uh, I don't have my mug with me anymore, but of course that mohawk haircut is absolutely uh, a queer head haircut. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, what else about this film? Really, really loved it. Uh, loved Goose. Really sad that's why Nick Fury lost his eye, though. Uh, everyone thinks it's happened because it's a huge, difficult space mission with aliens. But it was the kitty. 
to be fair, it's a freaking dangerous kitty, but, um, and I'm pretty sure this line is from Winter Soldier, but him and Cap were talking about trust, and Fury said, last time I trusted someone, I lost an eye. <sighs> he trusted Goose. Why, Goose? Oh, man. Uh, I haven't even mentioned Coulson. Uh, Coulson's role throughout the film, uh, we saw Fury, his badge, he was level 3, and I'm guessing Coulson was level 1, because he called him Rook, uh, he's a rookie. Uh, both of them basically just starting out of S.H.I.E.L.D., there's like 10 levels, so... Uh, if you haven't seen Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I highly recommend it. Coulson has become one of my favorite characters in the MCU because of it. Um, yeah, he's awesome. And it was nice to see his beginnings. It was so funny when he... <laughs> he was just like calling Fury, like, hey, uh, like, uh, hey, where'd you guys go? And, uh, the Coulson in the... Ta uh, the Coulson in the car with Fury was actually a scroll. And, uh, yeah, at the end of the film, Ronan said they'd be back for the weapon, and not the core, but for the woman. So that's really interesting, and, um, yeah, they think that Captain Marvel holds more value than the Tesseract. That's not insignificant. Um, yeah, that's very significant. Um, having, but I don't know, I don't know. Did they think he, did he think they could brainwash her or something else? Um, to think that she could, she is more of value than a freaking infinity stone, that's pr a pretty big deal. Um, but yeah, who, we know he survives until Guardians of the Galaxy, so he, maybe he tries at some point between those movies to recruit Carol somehow, or try to kidnap her and, like, take her power somehow. It makes me wonder if they're setting up a Captain Marvel sequel that takes place during that, be between those two movies, but... Honestly, I would prefer to see what she's doing after Endgame, um, though I don't... I guess I don't know that she survives Endgame, but I, I assume she does. Uh, they, I, don't, I don't think they'd kill her off so soon. Um, but yeah, I appreciate the small little humorous things in this movie. Uh, Goose being flung back when the ship was like taking off. Um, Maria asking Talos if he could turn into a filing cabinet, and he's like, why would I do that? Uh, and then there was like that moment when he uh, they were flying into space and Fury was like, is this turbulence like normal? And Carol's like, yeah. And Tal Talos is just like... <laughs> uh, really like subtle humor like that that I really appreciated. And yeah, I just really loved the film overall. Um, so cool that Monica Rambeau grew up with such great female role models in her life. And I hope the movie sends the message to young girls and women that embracing their emotions is in fact a good thing. That they don't have to prove anything to anyone, which is another thing. That final showdown with uh, Jan Rog and uh, Carol was great. He was just like challenging her to play by his rules again, and she had nothing. She said she had nothing to prove to him. I think that's really really cool. Um, yeah, I hope that uh, young women don't uh, realize that they don't have to prove anything to anyone. That they can be what they want to be, and I still can't get over that scene where she stood up over and over and over again. Uh, really really powerful. And I loved, again, I loved the line so much about how um, Maria thought Carol was the most powerful person um, before she could even shoot fire out of her fists. Because, yeah, she was super empathetic, strong, loving, a uh, mother to Monica, and a fighter. And it, long before she got Tesseract powers. And, yeah, I uh, really enjoy this film. Uh, I'm going to give this movie a 9 I feel I almost want to go to 9.5, but I'm going to stick with 9. And yeah, I hope Marvel can continue to deliver to deliver on uh, this more diverse cast going forward. Uh, if you want to watch the full reaction, you can check out Patreon in the link in the description below. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Stick around. We're going to be watching Endgame when it comes out in July, I'm guessing. Uh, maybe August. I, there's no firm digital release date yet, so uh, I don't know yet. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.